What is up, guys? Welcome back to Land Vision Studios. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today, we'll be going over Unreal Engine for Fortnite once again. And as promised, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a complete racing game inside of Fortnite. Now, I have created my own racing map in Fortnite. So if you guys want to check that out, I will leave the map code in the description. So make sure you check that out because it is a pretty cool little map. And it gives you an idea of what we're going to be making in this tutorial. So if you don't believe me that it works, you can always check that out. So let's go ahead and look in our project browser and let's create a new project. And I'm going to make this a, let's go ahead and go to simple here. And we're going to go ahead and just set up where we're going to save this file here. I'm going to go ahead and save this down here in my F file. And I think in my Fortnite published file, and we're going to go ahead and just select that folder. Now you can do that, whatever folder It's not going to be the same folder, of course. Let's go ahead and do our project name here. You can name your project anything you want. I'm just going to name mine LVS for Land Vision Studios uh, and MXV4 because this is going to be the fourth one that I'm going to be doing. So you guys can do version one if you want, or you can name it, you know, whatever you want. You can name it a uh, dirt bike motocross version one. Doesn't really matter. So once you have that created there, we're just going to hit create. All right, and as you can see, it's put your level right there in your content browser. We can go ahead and minimize all this stuff. And we're going to delete everything that's in this scene right here, except for the floor, just for now. And I actually want you to go ahead and get rid of these player spawns as well. So go ahead and delete the player spawns because we're going to create new ones. And get rid of the camera as well. And you can leave the background and the water. That's fine, unless you just want to get rid of it. We're going to go ahead and delete this floor as well and go ahead and create a landscape because we're going to be building our track on a landscape. There's some beautiful water and then there's some beautiful mountains back there and it's a beautiful sky. I mean, it's just a beautiful day on UEFN. All right, so let's go ahead and go into our landscape mode. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is make the location of this below the water. This is kind of how I do it quickly. So if you want to, you can just make the land something like negative 200 or something. And it's going to be below the water. It's really not that far below the water. So let's go ahead and go like negative 1,000. How about that? So now it's pretty far below the water there. And we can just hit create. This is kind of showing you guys how you could create an island for yourself if you wanted one as well. So that's kind of a two and two tutorial here. So hope you guys enjoy that. So what we're going to do is go ahead and make this tool strength for the sculpt all the way up. And let's go ahead and make the brush size a lot bigger. You can make it all the way if you want. And what we're going to do is just pull up. And now you see we have a little island. It's pretty simple and it's like a perfect circle. Now, of course, you can make this go as high as you want, but make sure that you know where your landscape is because that's where it's going to cut these off. You can always use fill world to get rid of that or make your landscape bigger, but but we're just going to make a small track here, so it doesn't necessarily have to be big. So now to make this island a little bigger, we're just going to go to this flatten tool here. And we can just drag that out. And you'll see that it stays perfectly level with that top layer there. Alright, so now I have myself a little island, and now I just want to get my player starts out just to kind of see how big my player is going to be. But we can go into our content drawer and type in player spawn. Make sure you have all refreshed, and it should pop up. So if you need to refresh it, you can just click on another folder, and just go back to all, and there it is. So you can just drag that in. So as you can see, the island's pretty decent size compared to my character. We can always make this bigger if we want to later. 
Just make sure that it's a decent enough size that you can fit a track on it. So now that we have our landscape, we're going to go ahead and set up some of the devices that we're going to need to make this game actually work. So I will leave a list of these devices on the screen here, but we'll also go over them real quick as well. So what I want you to do is go into your content drawer, and we're going to go into the Fortnite folder and go to Devices. Now you'll see, let's go ahead and make this thumbnail size smaller, and you can see a list of all the devices. So what we're going to need is, is we're going to need, of course, our vehicle. And in this case, we're going to make a dirt bike track. So we're going to make a dirt bike. So let's type in dirt bike, and there it should spawn. Just drag it in. Once you drag it in, just bring it pretty close to your player spawn. We're going to set this up for probably like four players. So we are going to rotate your player spawn to whatever direction it's going to face when the game starts. So make sure it's facing the same direction as your bike. Try to line it up perfectly with the bike. Alright, so just now place that player spawner right beside the bike there. We're actually going to bring this bike down a little bit below the ground so that the tires are kind of right above the ground there. So now we can pull this a little bit closer. All right. So now we have our player spawner and our bike. So let's go ahead and get the rest of our devices. We'll make this a little bit quicker. So for a race, we're going to need a race manager. So go ahead and type in race and drag in your race manager. We're also going to need a checkpoint. So when you type in race, you should see race checkpoint. Drag it in. We're also going to need a timed objective. So just type in timed and you should see it. Drag it in. You just want to make sure that these are nice and lined up and you keep these together. And we'll put this checkpoint in front of our player here. Just kind of set it up like it's going to be the start of the race. Okay, and the next device, we will need a score manager to keep the score of the checkpoints. All right, so let's go ahead and move these devices a little bit over here to the right. You can keep the checkpoint and the bike and the player spawner in the same spot. Let's go ahead and keep these kind of organized over here. So let's go ahead and set up settings for these objects. Let's do our player spawner first. So we're going to make four player spawners. So when you go into player spawners, you will go to player team. And you want to choose team index. And whatever team this is going to be on, it's going to be the number of the team. So you want to make sure that this number matches your player spawner. So this is player spawner one and player team index one. We're going to change visible in game to false. And that is all we're going to do for now. Now we're going to do the bike settings. So you can check off visible during game if you want. I'm going to leave it checked for now. Now keep in mind we might change some of these settings later, so please pay attention to these settings. You're going to turn vehicle indestructible to true. We're going to change this activating team to team index one. 
so that it links to the team index for the player one spawner. You want to make sure that fuel consumption is false unless you want like gas tanks on your track somewhere. Okay, so this is an important thing here for this bike spawner. For every driver or player spawner, you're going to have to assign the driver. This is so that the player will start on the bike. So if you want your player to start on the bike when the game starts, we're going to assign this driver here by clicking this plus element icon. We're actually not going to look through this as it might be a little bit too hard. Of course, you could just find the player spawner there and use that. But an easier way to do it is just selecting this eyedropper tool here and selecting player one. Then you want to select on player spawned. Make sure you have that selected or it will not work. So now when we start our game, we should start on our bike. We will test that in just a second. First, we're going to create some more spawners. So just select your player. You can make it closer if you want. Don't make it too close because we're going to add a barrier around this. Go ahead and select your player spawner and your bike. Make sure they're both selected. And just copy and paste them. Just like that. And we can move this over just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to have to assign all these drivers to their bikes. It won't just work automatically. So we're going to select this player here and change the team index to 2, change this one to 3, and change this one to 4. So now they should have all the same settings, but different team indexes. So now we need to assign the bikes to the new drivers. Let's go to the second bike here, because the first one's already set up. And it looks like it's already signed the driver to player spawner 2 for us. But if it hasn't, you can always select it with this eyedropper tool and select the player spawner there. Make sure you select on player spawned. And let's do it with the other two bikes. So it's already on player three for us, but if not, use that eyedropper tool to select your player spawner. And we're going to select on player spawn. And go to the fourth bike. It's already ready for me. And I'm gonna go to on player spawn. So when I copied and pasted those after already making the settings, it actually made it a little bit easier for me. That's because I had the player spawners and everything in the right order. So what you also want to do with these bikes is go to the second one and change the team indexes. Third, team index to three, and fourth, team index to four. So just make sure you're matching the activating team and team index to the right player from the right bike. All right, and as you can see, I spawned on my bike as the round started. So if you didn't spawn on your bike, what I want you to do is just hit escape and end game and start it again and see if you spawn on your bike. Now, if you don't spawn on your bike when the game starts, then you need to make sure that you adjust those settings to where they're perfect and make sure they're set to on player spawn. Make sure all the team indexes match and it should work correctly. Okay, so now we need to set up the race manager. So let's go ahead and select our race manager. And this is where you would select the number of laps. And we're actually not going to start the race on the game start. We're going to actually start it on the timed objective here. So let's go ahead and turn this start race on game start to false. You could name the race circuit name whenever you want. Make sure that all these are true. So we're going to select the timed objective for start race. 
and we're going to do on completed because we want the race to start when the time objective is complete. I'm just going to set my number of laps right now to one just to test it out. And don't worry about anything else. You don't need it. All right, so for the timed objective device. So this is going to be how many seconds is going to be before your start races. So for our time, I'm going to just leave it at 10 seconds. I think that's OK. If you want it to be three seconds, like three, two, one, you could do that. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it at 10. Okay, we're just going to scroll down here to start when round starts, and we're going to select that to true. And we're going to turn visible during game false. Make sure that countdown visible on HUD is true. We're going to turn urgency mode to false. All right, we're going to come down to the user option functions. We're going to go down to start. We're going to add an element, and we're just going to select the race manager. So go ahead and select the race manager. And we're going to select on race completed. So now that you have that, let's go over our checkpoint. So for our checkpoints, we're going to make sure that allow players to pass without vehicle is set to false. And of course, this is where you're going to change the checkpoint number as we add them in. So let's go ahead and add some. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four. So now I have five checkpoints. So let's go ahead and label them. That's one, two, three, four, and five. And as you can see, they're all kind of turned the wrong direction. So to fix that real quick, you just select them all and go up to your rotation and this value here and set it to 90. You may have to set it to whatever rotation it is to your project. But it's an easy way to change the rotation. Anyways, now that we have this set up, we want to set up our score manager. So we're going to click on our score manager and make sure your score value is set to one if that's what you want it to be. And of course, it's going to be add. And activating team is any. And we're going to set this display score update on HUD for this one. All right, so we're going to set the HUD message to checkpoint. You can set it to wherever you want, like score or checkpoint or whatever you want. And we're going to want to go under the user option functions and go for, to activate because we need to activate these checkpoints as we go through them. So we're going to click on this plus icon here. And we're just going to select the first checkpoint here. And we're going to select on checkpoint completed. And we need to do that for every single checkpoint in order for this game to register us getting these points. So just go ahead and add elements. So for however many checkpoints you may have. And we're just going to select each checkpoint here with the eyedropper tools. So as you can see, I'm just selecting the eyedropper tool and selecting the checkpoint there. So make sure that you set these to on checkpoint completed, on checkpoint completed, on checkpoint completed, and you guessed it, on checkpoint completed.
I believe that is all we need for now. Let's go ahead and test this out and see what happens. Let's just go ahead and push our changes here and save selected. Uh oh, it looks like the checkpoints aren't working. I know what we need to do to fix that. So let's go back into our game here and select all our checkpoints. Make sure that you end the game. Select all the checkpoints here. And we're just going to go down to the setting here, visible prior to race start, and we're going to select yes. Sorry about that, guys. So, it should work now. Let's go ahead and push changes again, and let's go ahead and start the game. Alright, the game is started. We're on our bike, and you can see the checkpoints are working. We're going to go ahead and set up our island settings for this race. So let's go into our outliner here at the top and search for island. You should see your island settings. Go ahead and go to details. And I would suggest setting the voice chat to all just so everybody can talk. And we want to set the max players to four and the teams to free for all. I'm going to go ahead and set the total rounds to 100 just to test the rounds. Let's turn off this time limit. For score to end, you just set it to however many checkpoints you have. In this case, I have five, so I'm just going to set it to five. For join in progress, you want to spawn for next round. You can set this game start countdown to zero. Keep scrolling down, make sure invisibility is set to on if you want invincibility. Okay, make sure you set the game start countdown to zero. And the vehicle trick score multiplier. Now that just depends on if you want vehicle score. I would set it to zero. Set the vehicle damage objects to false and vehicle impacts damage false. Keep on scrolling down. Go to allow building and set that to none. So allow building is none. Make sure the environment damage is off. Structure damage is none. Start with pickaxe false. Just keep scrolling down here with me guys. We're going to set wood resource count to false. Stone resource count to false. Metal resource count to false. And of course, gold resource count if it's active to false. Let's go down to the UI settings. And we're just going to set all these to 10. Set the HUD info type to score. Use team score. True. We're going to turn on this round win condition and set it to score. Come down to the first scoreboard column. We're going to set it to score.
the second column to race time. Because we will be setting up race time for this as well. Scroll down a little bit more. This is where you can set your custom victory callout. So you can set it to you won the race. And custom defeat, you lose sad face. We want to make sure we set the end game callout to placement. And I believe that is all for that. Forgive me if I'm wrong. So now what we want to do is add a time device. So a timer device. Set that in. And we want to start the time device when the time objective is completed. So start the time device, or the timer device, when the timed objective is completed. So there are our timer objective here. Let's go ahead and say race starts in. So you can see where that is. Click back on our time device. Let's just name it race time. And we'll set it to count up. And set the duration to as big as it'll go. I think 3600. Make sure it's not set on game start. It's activated by the time device. Okay, we're going to go down to start for all. On the timed objective. And select on completed. And complete for all. When the race manager... Make sure it's Race Manager on Race Completed. It should start the timer device when the time objective stops. And the timer device will complete when the Race Manager is completed. Alright, so let's add one more thing before we test this out because I'm pretty sure it should all work. So what I need to do is add a barrier device to these bikes so everyone starts at the same time. We're just going to go back into our content drawer under devices and type in barrier. You should see a barrier device. Just going to drag that in. And we're going to make it smaller. We're actually going to drag that over the bike. So we're going to scale it where it's pretty close to the bike. You want to give it some headroom where it's above the character there. So you want to make it as small as you can just to make it clean. So let's go ahead and set up these settings for this so we can just copy and paste this. So for the barrier device, we're going to set the base visible during game to false. We're going to set the zone shape to hollow box. And we're going to set collide with camera to false. Then we're going to come down to the user options functions. Go to Disable, make sure you're under Disable, not Enable, Disable, and add an element. We're just going to make 
this end when the timed objective completes. So you're going to set it to timed objective on completed. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this over to all of our bytes. And let's push the changes and let's see if our game is working. Everything should be working. The time, the spawn, everything in the beginning should work. All right, the box is dropped and it looks like the race has worked, guys. We have a victory screen in round one of 100 as I set it to 100 rounds. It tells us we got five checkpoints and it tells us our race time as well. Let's go ahead and test it one more time just to make sure it's working. So it places us in our bike, counts down the race to start, and you can go. So it should show our victory screen and I won round two of 100, so that worked. It shows me that I've won two rounds, that I'm in first place, that I've got five checkpoints, and I won in four seconds. Well, roughly. So let's go back into our Unreal Engine editor, and I'll show you guys a few tricks on how to make a dirt bike track. Now, there's several ways you can do this, and you can use splines, guys. I'm very well aware of this, but this is just a fun method for me as I like to just kind of mess with the landscape tools. So we're going to go back into our landscape mode here. And let's go ahead and select the paint tool. And we, of course, got all these different layers here. And I like to use the second layer here. And I like to set it to subtractive blend. The brush fall off is up to your liking. If you want it more sharp, I would use that sharp linear fall off. When you have that selected, now you can see I can paint that specific ground texture, which is pretty cool. What you want to do is make your brush size about the size of your checkpoints. From the starting line, I'm just going to draw a straight line. And I want them to start kind of with a whole shot, so I'm going to make it kind of go around here. Then I'm going to make this kind of thing that kind of goes into it like that. And then we're just going to make our track. Make sure it ends here instead of here. All right, so you see we have our whole shot here. So I'm just going to kind of bring this around here and make a curve here. And then I'm just going to bring it this way. Just make some curves for the turns. Maybe another one there. If you mess up, you can just try again. <clears throat> and we're just going to clean up some of these turns here. Okay, 
So I think we have a decent little track. Yours might look a little different than mine. And that's okay. I'm actually going to publish this map and share it with you guys so you guys can test out what I actually made on here. If you made it, try to make it exactly like mine. Now, if you look at this from an angle, it kind of looks like an E with a fat top. And this is kind of going into that fat top. I would suggest leaving a little space in between these turns here just to make it look a little better. Try to get these as round as you can. So now we have our track. So what I'm going to do is go back to my landscape mode, go to sculpt, and go to this ramp. When you use this ramp, make sure you know where you're at. Try to get it nice and centered. Go ahead and select it there, just a little bit above it. Try to make sure that this is even. Just pull it up just a little bit. Not too much, because you don't want it to be too slanted. And you're just going to add the ramp. Now you see the width of this is just a little bit too much. So we're going to undo that. And we're going to change the ramp width to a little bit less and the side fall off to a little bit less as well. Click reset. So now we have this little ramp. What I actually like to do just kind of get it from this top angle here with the ramp tool and just go ahead and make another ramp slanted down and make sure it's nice and even. So now we have this nice little ramp. So I'm pretty much just got to make a ramp from both sides. Let's try it again. Select your ramp tool. Select about the center here. Make sure you select Reset. Select your ramp tool. And just select about in the middle. And just pull it up slightly and add the ramp. Reset it and do it the opposite way. Make sure you pull it where it's nice and even across this edge. Add the ramp. Reset. And now you have a ramp. Pretty cool. Awesome. So now that we're coming around this turn here, I actually want to make a big ramp right here. Where you kind of have to do a whip around it. So maybe we'll add a tabletop right here. So just use your ramp tool again, and we'll make this one a little bit bigger. Add the ramp, reset it, and we can make another one here. Just pull that up, add the ramp, reset it, and we'll just add another ramp down. That'll be our landing ramp. See, mine's a little bit crooked, so we want to make sure when you do this that the ramp width is going off the edge here, and this is lined up. So you may want to adjust it like that, and then add the ramp. If you don't want edges like this, just add another ramp. Try to clean it up.
You can always smooth out the edges here with the smooth tool. Just make the brush size small. And I would set the brush strength pretty low. And it's not perfect, but I'm just kind of showing you guys how you can do it. If you take your time, you can get something a lot better. Let's go ahead and try to add another ramp here. We'll do a double here. How about that? So I think that's pretty good there. Let's raise it up and add the ramp. Reset it. And we'll add a ramp on the other side. And reset it. You pretty much just got to do this all the way around the map with whatever size ramps you want to use. So if we're going to make a landing ramp for a bigger jump, kind of want to space it out where you think it's going to land. In this case, I think maybe it might land about right here. So we'll add a landing ramp there. We'll also smooth out this side. And we'll also smooth out the side. That way, if you miss the jump, you can always hit the second one. So we're going to go ahead and delete these four here and make sure you're starting with number one. So we have checkpoint one and the settings are already ready to go. But the thing about starting this race is we want to start the race and end the race in the same position. So I think I'm going to do it on top of this tabletop here. So we're just going to position it like that. And what I would advise doing when you're making these races is if you don't want to have a ton of checkpoints, you just want to have a few so they're not taking up your whole map. I'm not really sure how to get rid of them in UAFN. For some reason, it glitches and they stay on there. Um, I also have a problem with the glitches with matchmaking lobby screens. So if you guys know how to fix the matchmaking lobby screens, that would be awesome. Anyway, back to these checkpoints. So, what I would suggest doing uh, just to save space and stuff and not to make so many checkpoints so it makes it hard on yourself uh, is I would actually copy and paste this. Make sure it's checkpoint two. And then I would just set it somewhere where it's like at the end of each turn here. That way the arrow is kind of directing you where to go and it's not kind of getting lost. So we'll just set that one there and then we're going to turn this one. And we'll just bring it all the way down here to the end of the track. And we'll just copy and paste that one again. And it should be checkpoint number four. We'll bring it to the end of that side. We're actually going to copy and paste on this all the way on this side. And same with that side. And just do this all throughout the map pretty much. And for the last checkpoint here, we're actually going to make that in the same position that the first checkpoint is in.
All right, and we're just going to go around this map here and label these. So that's going to be number two. And three. And four. And just go through them all, guys. Make sure that they're in order. All right, so I ended up with 10 checkpoints, so that ended up perfectly with a nice number. I would suggest trying to end on an even number. People like even numbers, so try to stay with even numbers. Okay, so the next thing you want to kind of look at is when you're racing, which ways are the numbers facing? You want to make sure that all these numbers are facing in the right direction. That one's in the wrong direction, so we're going to change that around. And I believe this 8 is in the wrong direction, so we're going to turn that around. And the 9 is in the wrong direction, so we're going to turn that around. And I believe we're good. So what we can actually do is go to our outliner. And we're just going to search checkpoints and just select them all. Go to details and we're going to set the scale for all of these to two. It just makes them a little bit bigger so they fit on the track better. So now that we have all of our checkpoints labeled, all of our race settings set to where they work. We actually have one final step to make sure this race works. We need to adjust the score manager again because it's taken our checkpoints out of it. So we have 10 checkpoints. So let's go ahead and activate this 10 times. We'll do 9 in this case since there's an index 0. We'll just hit the plus button until there is 10 elements. So this is very important guys. You want to make sure that you're doing these in order as we already have our first checkpoint set. So let's just go ahead and do the rest of them. So get your eyedropper tool and select 2. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, And 10. And if you have any extras, you can just delete those. Make sure you set all these checkpoints to on checkpoint completed. 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 All right, and I believe that is it, guys. I think that's everything we need to do for now to make this race work perfectly. Let's go ahead and push the changes here and test out this track. All right, here we go. Mm. 
Now, when you're actually in the game, if you actually have a public game, it will actually show your score on the right. I don't know why it does it in UEFN, but it will. As you can see, it's showing the checkpoints that we're getting in right now. Uh oh, the game stopped at 5 because I have the games to set to 5. So we're actually going to turn that off. And that'll be the final thing, guys. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I forgot all about that. Alright, so we're going to go back into our outliner. And we're going back to our island settings. And the details. And just type score in the search bar. At score to end. And just turn that off. In the game. All right, let's go ahead and push changes again. All right, guys, that's how you make a racing game in Fortnite. If you want to stick around for my next tutorials, I'll show you guys how to decorate this even further. And if you want to check out a race map that I've already created, I will leave that map code in the description or the comments. If you guys want to join my Discord channel, I would love to play with you guys and test these maps out with you. So if you want to do that, join my Discord channel and we'll link up on there. I'll leave that in the description as well. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.